stand and observe a minute of silence. May their souls rest in peace. Thank you very much. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the Pan-African Parliament, your Parliament is always pleased to see you in attendance at this temple of democracy, human rights and the rule of law. Therefore, I also have the honor on behalf of the members of the Pan-African Parliament, the Secretariat and my Cabinet to wish you most welcome here to Midrand in the rainbow nation, country of peace, liberty, and coexistence beyond diversity. I particularly welcome the excellencies, the speakers of assemblies and presidents of senates of Congo, Brazzaville, South Africa, Zimbabwe, and Excellency Ambassador Benin Bukoko, Dean of the Diplomatic Corps, Their Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen, Ambassadors and High Commissioners, as well as representatives of international organizations accredited to South Africa, uh, as well as international development partners, including Mrs. Naye Anabatali, Coordinator of parliamentary engagement at the World Bank, who especially came to represent the August Bretton Woods Institution. I commend and congratulate the states that are returning to this continental institution. These include the Parliament of the Union of the Comores, the Parliament of Guinea-Bissau, the Parliament of Sao Tome and Principe, and finally the long-awaited return of the Parliament of Libya. Furthermore, their presence further facilitates our work and raise the visibility of our continent. To all of you, I thank you for being here. The sixth session of the fourth parliament starts today in a very particular context in the history of our institution. Out of the 55 member states of the African Union, 53 are present. One country has not yet exceeded, and another is facing post-electoral conflict. This attests to the parliamentary diplomacy, the presence that we have established here. You are most welcome members of Parliament of Africa, old and new. The House of the People of Africa is pleased to welcome you. The massive outcome has never seen in the past. It is historical and represents not only the parliamentary diplomacy of those present here and led by the Bureau for three years now that I had the honor and the privilege and the responsibility to steer with the support of all my colleagues from the fourth parliament. But this is also the logic wake of the assembly its work in the following areas, development of relations with African leaders, systematizing the interactions with national, regional, and intercontinental parliaments, as well as the revitalization of our relations with development partners. These relations have helped us to achieve in three years the challenge of visibility and in increase the credibility of the Pan-African Parliament. Our visibility as a Pan-African Parliament enabled us to become uh, a body that is well known and well recognized. Who has not seen the President of the Pan-African Parliament speaking on behalf of European and African parliaments, the people of Europe and the people of Africa at the Africa-Europe Summit last November in Abidjan. 
or the standing ovation given to the president and the PIP delegation in 2015 at the National Assembly in the Republic of France when this august assembly uh, visited the uh, parliament to plead the cause of Africa in view of COP21 held in Paris. This is a recognition of uh, the initiatives of the Pan-African Parliament, mindful of the well-being of the African people in a world where narrow interests often take over general interest. The organization of the Pan-African Parliament of a side event during COP22 in Marrakesh or COP23 in Bonn to draw attention to the role of African members of parliament in the fight against climate change. This is all part of our drive as the African people subscribing to this struggle should not suffer from the impact and the compensations must be made. Women and children have also been given pride of place during this uh, term. On the United Nations session on the Commission on the Status of Women in New York, 60 participants, most of them women members of parliament from the member states of the African Union and the other regions of the world, they attended the forum organized on the margins of this session by the members of the Women's Caucus of The delegation's wishes to establish a network of women parliamentarians, and this has enlightened uh, the public about PUP's willingness to garner a maximum of women to make their commitment more effective. The Pan-African Parliament, your parliament, mindful of the problems befalling our continent in terms of nutrition and food, has led the Bureau to propose to the plenary to name Dr. Prelan Chetinge as ambassador for food security, a topic that is of the utmost concern to Africa. The roundtable organized on 23 March 2018 with the South African authorities at the Pan-African Parliament was the opportunity to show, among others, their appreciation for the interest shown by the pub to the, in, to the issue of food security. But countries such as Nigeria have already announced their willingness to work with the Pan-African Parliament on this issue. The youth of this continent in Khartoum, Sudan, from 12 to 14 November 2017, held a summit dedicated to them. And the report of this event is enlightening, showing the hope that was born in the minds of the youth who participated in this summit. Ladies and gentlemen, the challenges befalling our continent are daunting. These include youth migration, climate change, massive exodus, electrification, agriculture, and climate change, just to name a few. Our parliament is seized of all these issues and intends giving its opinion on all these themes. As we are opening our session, there are many challenges befalling our continent. Agenda 2063 and Agenda 2030 and Agenda 2020 and the continental free trade area. On Agenda 2063, we dedicate the first 10 years to implement the first part, and the Pan-African Parliament must play a decisive role for the people of Africa to take ownership of it. Agenda 2020 is aimed at silencing the guns in Africa by 2020. This topic has been discussed at length in our parliament, and we unanimously resolved to drive this agenda so that the Africans will no longer be used as cannon fodder. Finally, as for Agenda 2030, 
2030, you remember that the African countries, the ACP countries, and Europe signed an agreement in Cotonou, and this agreement will expire in 2020. The first agreement has not uh, been um, the subject of input from Africans, but it is decided that Africa, through its parliament, should also contribute. Over the last few, three years, the Pan-African Parliament has organized events inside and outside its seat. For example, we had a session in Sharm el-Sheikh in Egypt, which was, a, which was a resounding success. We also organized the Continental Conference on Integration organized in Yahundi, Cameroon in August 2007. And in the wake of this, the freedom of movement of goods and people became a reality in Central Africa. As to the efforts to speak on behalf of the continent with the outside world, the Pan-African Parliament sent two missions to the United States of America in order to plead the cause of lifting economic sanctions against Sudan. These missions have, were led by myself, and we met with the high-level authorities, such as the Secretary of State at the State Department in charge of African Affairs. But the highlight of this mission was the meeting of African members of parliament with the American Senate. These missions led to the economic sanctions in Sudan being lifted. This state of affairs explains the call made by myself to His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Rwanda, His Excellency Paul Kagame, President of the High Committee of the Wise for the Reform of the African Union. He decided to join, to include me in the team that he entrusted with this mission. Ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, the structural identity of the Pan-African Parliament as one of the organs of the African Union, which at the beginning of the fourth parliament was questioned by many citizens in our countries and some of our parliaments, has now become a reality. Thanks to its members of parliament, its staff who have spared no effort to achieve this. Once again, I would like to thank them they have made the fourth parliament an exceptional one, exceptional on all fronts. And it was my duty to recognize this and express my appreciation for this sterling achievement as we are opening this sixth and last session of the fourth parliament. Allow me to conclude by once again thanking all of you who have traveled to Midrand from this temple of democracy and rule of law. I wish that our deliberations will run smoothly as usual in a spirit of peace and cordiality because it cannot be otherwise. We are the representatives of the people of Africa. We speak on behalf of the people of Africa. Our example to the people of Africa must start from this house so that we all know what we represent. With this, I declare open the sixth ordinary session of the fourth parliament. Thank you for your kind attention. Long live the Pan-African Parliament, long live the African Union, long live African women, long live Africa. Asante sana, shonkran. Thank you. Obrigada. La session est ouverte. The session is called to order. Honorable members, in accordance with Rule 9 of the Rules of Procedure, we will now proceed to swear in the new members. I, invest, I invite the clerk of the Pan-African Parliament to invite the new members to take the oath in accordance with the above-mentioned rule. Mr. Clerk, you have the floor.
Honorable members, I would like to start by inviting the delegation from Algeria uh, to the front. Honorable Madam Amir Slim and Honorable Senator Abdelkader Murklua. Before the swearing in, I would like to welcome in our midst uh, the speaker of the National Assembly of Swaziland who came here to attend our session. Mr. Speaker, you are most welcome. I, Mrs. Amira Slim, member of the Pan-African Parliament, solemnly commits before the people of Africa and the Pan-African Parliament to honor, with, to, to perform my functions to the best of my ability and with honor and dignity in the service of the people of Africa. I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the African Union and will preserve, protect, and defend the Constitutive Act of the African Union and the protocol to the treaty establishing the African Economic Community relating to the Pan-African Parliament as by law established and will promote adherence to the principles of good governance, democracy, human rights, international humanitarian law, peace, stability, and all objectives of the Pan-African Parliament. So help me God. Thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <laughs> I, Honorable Abdel Kader Mukhlua, member of the Council of Algeria, solemnly declare before the people of Africa and God to perform my functions as a member of the Pan-African Parliament to the best of my ability and with honor and dignity in the service of the peoples of Africa, and I will be faithful and pay true allegiance to the African Union, will preserve, protect, and defend the Constitutive Act of the African Union and the protocol to the treaty establishing the African Economic Community relating to the Pan-African Parliament as by law established, and will promote adherence to the principles of good governance, democracy, human rights, international humanitarian law, peace, stability, and all objectives of the Pan-African Parliament. So help me, God. Salam alaikum. Honorable members, we have a list of 72 uh, honorable uh, members to be sworn in this morning. I kindly request, in the interest of time, that when the delegations come in front, they uh, say the oath together as a delegation. From Angola, Honorable Dr. Fernando Jose de Franca Diaz Van Dunem. Also from Angola, Honorable Ernesto Joaquim Mulato. Eu, eu Ernesto. Fernando José de França Dias Van Dunen, pela presente, juro 
juro solenemente que desempenharei as minhas funções de membro do Parlamento Pan-Africano do Parlamento Pan-Africano, com toda a, com minha, toda capacidade, a minha capacidade, honra, honra e, dignidade e dignidade ao serviço, ao serviço dos, dos povos, povos africanos. africanos. Servirei com, com lealdade e fidelidade, e fidelidade à, União africana, à União Africana, preservarei, protegerei, defenderei o ato constitucional. Defend the Constitu Constitutive Act of the African Union and the protocol to the treaty establishing the African Economic Community relating to the Pan-African Parliament as by law established and will promote adherence to the principles of good governance, democracy, human rights, international humanitarian law, peace, stability, and all objectives of the Pan-African Parliament. So help me God, I so affirm. Oh, so Opa. From Botswana, Honorable Madam Kosi Mossad Seboko. I, Kosi Masadi Sibogo, hereby swear that I will perform my functions as a member of the Pan-African Parliament to the best of my ability and with honor and dignity in the service of the people of Africa. I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the African Union and will preserve, protect, and defend the Constitutive Act of the African Union and the protocol of the treaty establishing the African Economic Community relating to the Pan-African Parliament as by law established. And I will promote adherence to the principles of good governance, democracy, human rights, international humanitarian law, peace, stability, and all objectives of the Pan-African Parliament. So help me God. Thank you. From Cameroon, Honorable Senator Sylvester Na Ondoa, Honorable Madam Senator Marie-Claire Mwampere Mbio, I, Na Angwasa Sylvestre, member of the Pan-African Parliament, hereby swear that I will perform my duties as a member of the Pan-African Parliament 
to the best of my ability with honor and dignity in the service of the peoples of Africa. I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the African Union and will preserve, protect, and defend the Constitutive Act of the African Union and the protocol to the treaty establishing the African Economic Community relating to the Pan-African Parliament as by law established. And I will promote adherence to the principles of good governance, democracy, human rights, international humanitarian law, peace, stability, and all objectives of the Pan-African Parliament. So help me God. From the Comoros, Honorable Hakim Ramiara Ibrahim, Honorable Mohammed Rashad Abdu, Honorable Nasimu Ahmad, Honorable Madam Zalihata Ali, and Honorable Ahamada Moisi. You may have noticed, Honorable Members, that I skipped Central African Republic. The delegation is not yet here. If they are here on time, we'll put them somewhere towards the end. Otherwise, uh, they'll be sewn in tomorrow. Hashem Ramiar Ibrahim, député du Parlement panafricain, prend l'engagement solennel devant les peuples africains et devant Dieu de m'acquitter de mes fonctions de membre du Parlement africain avec honneur et dignité au service des peuples africains de servir avec loyauté et entière allégeance à l'Union africaine de préserver, protéger et défendre l'acte constitutif de l'Union africaine et le protocole pour la création de communauté économique africaine relative au Parlement panafricain tel qu'il est défini par la loi et de promouvoir le respect des principes de bonne gouvernance, de démocratie ainsi que ceux relatifs aux droits humains, aux droits internationaux humanitaires à la, à la paix, paix à, à la stabilité, stabilité aux objectifs du Parlement panafricain. Je le jure. From Congo, Honorable Isdorum Vuba, Honorable Pascal Tsatemabial, and Honorable Madame Marie Louise Tono.
Non, toi, on ne pas, c'est moi. Lui, il n'est pas là. C'est lui qui est là. Moi, Vouba Isidor, député du Parlement panafricain, prends l'engagement solennel devant les peuples africains et devant Dieu de m'acquitter de mes fonctions de membre du Parlement panafricain avec honneur et dignité au service des peuples africains, de servir avec loyauté et entière allégeance à l'Union africaine de préserver, protéger, de défendre l'acte constitutif de l'Union africaine, de du traité portant création de la communauté économique africaine relative au Parlement panafricain tel que défini par la loi, et de promouvoir le respect des principes de bonne gouvernance, de démocratie, ainsi que ceux relatifs aux droits humains aux droits internationaux humanitaires, à la paix, à la stabilité et aux objectifs du Parlement panafricain. Je le jure. From Côte d'Ivoire, Honorable Madame Traori Mariam, Honorable Iao Lazare, Honorable Madame Kamara Kinaya Juliet, Honorable Kone Abubakar Sidik, Moi, Kone Aboubaka Sidiki, député du Parlement panafricain, prends l'engagement solennel devant les peuples africains et devant Dieu de m'acquitter de mes fonctions de membre du Parlement panafricain avec honneur et dignité au service des peuples africains, de servir avec loyauté et entière allégeance à l'Union africaine de préserver, de protéger et défendre l'acte constitutif de l'Union africaine et le protocole de traité portant création de la communauté économique africaine relative au Parlement panafricain tel que défini par la loi et de promouvoir le respect des droits, des principes de bonne gouvernance, de démocratie ainsi que ceux relatifs aux droits humains, aux droits internationaux humanitaires à la paix, à la stabilité et aux objectifs du Parlement panafricain. Je le jure. From the Democratic Republic of Congo, Honorable Patrick Mayombe Mumbioko. Moi, Patrick Mayombe Mumbioko Andoko, 
député du Parlement panafricain, prend l'engagement solennel devant le peuple africain et devant Dieu de m'acquitter de mes fonctions de membre du Parlement panafricain avec honneur et dignité au service du peuple africain. De servir, de servir avec loyauté et entière allégeance à l'Union africaine, de préserver, protéger et défendre l'acte constitutif de l'Union africaine et les protocoles du traité portant création de la communauté économique africaine relatif au Parlement panafricain tel que défini par la loi et de promouvoir le respect des principes de bonne gouvernance, des démocraties ainsi que ses relatifs aux droits humains, aux droits, aux droits internationaux et humanitaires, à la paix, à la stabilité, aux objectifs du Parlement panafricain. Je le jure. From Djibouti, Honorable Madame Safia Elmi Jibril. Honorable Abdallah Barakat Ibrahim. Honorable Madam Halo Mohamed Ibrahim. Honorable Mahmoud Mustafa Daher. Honorable Hussein Muhammad Ali. Bonjour, euh, chers collègues. Moi, Madame Safia Elmi Djibril, députée du Parlement panafricain, prends l'engagement solennel devant le peuple africain et devant Dieu de m'acquitter de mes fonctions de membre du Parlement panafricain avec honneur et dignité au service du peuple africain, de servir avec loyauté et entière allégeance à l'Union africaine, de préserver, protéger et défendre l'acte constitutif de l'Union africaine et le protocole au traité portant création de la communauté économique africaine relative au Parlement panafricain tel que défini par la loi et de promouvoir le respect des principes de bonne gouvernance, des démocraties, ainsi que ceux relatifs aux droits humains, aux droits internationaux humanitaires, à la paix, à la stabilité, aux objectifs du Parlement panafricain. Je le jure. From Equatorial Guinea, Honorable Madame Evangelina Filomena Oyo Ebule, Honorable Juan Roku Enumbi, Honorable Anselmo Sepa Bamwala, Honorable Madame Senator Purification Buhari Lasakero, Honorable Senator Saturnino Oke Esono.
La señora. Aquí es. Y el otro. Nosotros aquí juramos solemnemente que desempeñaremos nuestras funciones como miembro del Parlamento Panamericano al máximo de nuestras capacidades y con honor y dignidad al servicio de la gente de África. Seremos fieles y brindaremos real lealtad a la Unión Africana y preservaremos, protegeremos y defenderemos la Constitución de la Unión Africana y el protocolo del tratado establecido la Comunidad Económica Africana relacionado al Parlamento Panafricano como se establece en esta ley. Promovemos el respeto a los principios de la buena gobernabilidad, democracia, los derechos humanos y la legislación humanitaria internacional, la paz, la estabilidad y todos los objetivos del Parlamento Panafricano. Que Dios nos ayude. Gracias. From Guinea Bissau, Honorable Madam Dama Yala Nkanya Baranshao, Honorable Amizade Fara Mendez, Honorable Domingos Alexandra Aromeida, Honorable Daniel Suleiman Embalo and Honorable Lasana Fati. I, hereby swear that I will perform my functions as a member of the Pan-African Parliament to the best of my ability and with honor and dignity in the service of the peoples of Africa. I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the African Union, will preserve, protect, and defend the Constitutive Act of the African Union, and the protocol to the treaty establishing the African co Economic Community relating to the Pan-African Parliament as by law established. And I will promote adherence to the principles of good governance, democracy, human rights, international humanitarian law, peace, stability, and all objectives of the Pan-African Parliament. So help me God. From the Republic of Kenya, Honorable Jude Njomo, Honorable Madam Beatrice Kones, Honorable Madam Janet Ongera, Honorable Senator Dr. Abdullahi Ibrahim Ali, Honorable Senator Stuart Matayo.
Okay. I, I Honorable Reverend Janet Ongera, hereby by swear and, and declare, declare that I will, I will perform, perform my functions as a member of the Pan African Parliament, Parliament to the best of my ability and with, and with honor, honor and dignity in the, in the service of the people of Africa. Africa. I, will I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the African, African Union. And, and I will preserve, protect, and defend the constitutive act of the African Union and the protocol to the treaty establishing the African Economic Community relating to the Pan-African Parliament as by law established. And I will promote, adhere to the principles of good governance, democracy, human rights, international humanitarian law, peace, stability, and all objectives of the Pan-African Parliament. So help me God. From the Kingdom of Lesotho, Honorable May Senator Ndati Bereng. The Honorable Senator is not in the chamber. From Liberia, Honorable Alex Chelsea Grant. Honorable Hans M. Barchu. Honorable Madam Julie F. Weir. I, Ntati Bering, hereby swear declare that Okay. I apologize. Okay. I thought you were not in the house. Okay. I, Ntati Bering, hereby swear declare that I will perform my functions as member of the Pan-African Parliament to the best of my ability and with honor and dignity in the service of the peoples of Africa. I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the African Union and will preserve, protect, and defend the Constitutive Act of the, Pen of the African Union and the protocol up to the treaty establishing the African Economic Community relating to the Pan-African Parliament as by law established. And I will promote adherence to the principles of good governance, democracy, human rights, international humanitarian law, peace, stability, and all objectives of the Pan-African Parliament. So help me God. Alex Chester Green, hereby solemnly declare that I will perform my functions as a member of the Palm African Parliament to the best of my ability and with honor and dignity in the service of the peoples of Africa. I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the African Union and will preserve, protect, defend the constituted act of the African Union and the protocol to the treaty establishing the African Economic Community relating to the Pan-African Parliament as by law established. And I will promote adherence to the principles of good governance, democracy, 
human rights, international humanitarian laws, peace, stability, and, and, all, objectives and all objectives of the Pan-African Parliament. Parliament. So, so help me go. God. From Malawi, Honorable Madam Alice Deliwe Ngoma Banda. I, Alice Ngoma Banda, I will perform my function as a member of Pan Africa Parliament, the best of my ability, and with honor and dignity in the service of the people of Africa. I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the Union, Africa Union, and the, I will preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution Act of the Africa. Union and the protocol to the Treasury establish the Africa economic community relating to the Pan Africa Parliament as by law established. I will promote and adhere to the principle of good governance, democracy, human rights, international humanitarian law, peace, stability, and all objectives of the Pan Africa Parliament. So help me, God. From Mali, Honorable Abdul Malik Sedu Jalo. Abdul Malik Seydouga. Hi, Abdul Seik Diallo. A member of uh, Pan African Parliament hereby swear solemnly declare that I will perform my duties as a member of the Pan African Parliament to the best of my ability with honor and dignity in the service of the peoples of Africa. I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the African Union and will preserve, protect, and defend the Constitutive Act of the African Union and the protocol to the treaty establishing the African Economic Community relating to the Pan-African Parliament as by law established. And I will promote adherence to the principles of good governance, democracy, human rights, international humanitarian law, peace, stability, and all objectives of the Pan-African Parliament. So help me God, I so affirm. For the first time in our history, from the Kingdom of Morocco, Honorable Nouredin Karba, Honorable Madam Maryam U. Sata, Honorable Mohamed Zakrani, Honorable Yafadu Benbarek, Honorable Abdelatif Abdu, Thank you. 
أقسم بالله العظيم Uh, hereby swear, solemnly declare that I will perform our duties as members of the Pan-African Parliament to the best of our ability, with honor and dignity in the service of the peoples of Africa. We will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the African Union and will preserve, protect, defend the constitutive act of the African Union and uh, the protocol of the treaty establishing the African Economic Community relating to the Pan-African Parliament as by law established. And I we will promote adherence to the principles of good governance, democracy, human rights, international human law, uh, stability, and all objectives of the Pan-African Parliament. So help me God, help us God, and we so affirm, thank you. From Sao Tome and Principe, Honorable Levi Nazare, Honorable Idalesio Charisma, Honorable Seromira Sacramento, Madam, Honorable Madam Maria Das Neves de Sousa. Honorable George Amado. Eu e Levi do Espírito Santo Nazaré. I Espírito Santo Nazaré. É. Hereby swear solemnly declare. Perform my functions as a member of the Pan African Parliament to the best of my ability and with honor and dignity in the service of the peoples of Africa. I will be faithful and by a true allegiance to the African Union and will preserve, protect and defend the constitutive act of the African Union and the protocol to the treaty establishing the African Economic Community relating to the Pan-African Parliament as uh, by law established. And uh, I will promote adherence to the principles of good governance, uh, democracy, human rights, international humanitarian law, peace, stability, and all objectives of uh, the Pan-African Parliament. So help me God. From Senegal, Honorable Jibril War, Honorable Madame Kadiba, Honorable Madame Aramatulai Jata, Honorable Madame Kumba Hamidudem, Honorable Toussaint Manga.
nous. Oui, Djibri uh, Wawa, Mr. Toussaint Manga, Mrs. Haliba, Mrs. Sukumba Amadou Diem, Mrs. Amaro and Abdullah Diada, members of the Pan-African Parliament hereby swear solemnly, declare that we will perform our duties as members of the Pan-African Parliament to the best of our ability with honor and dignity in the service of the peoples of Africa. We will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the African Union and will preserve, protect, and defend the Constitutive Act of the African Union and the protocol to the treaty establishing the African Economic Community relating to the Pan-African Parliament as by law established. And we shall promote adherence to the principles of good governance, democracy, human rights, international human law, peace, stability, and all objectives of the Pan-African Parliament. So help us God, and we so affirm. From the Republic of South Africa. Honorable Madam Tokozile Didiza. Honorable Madam Tandi Modise. Honorable Julius Malema. <laughs> Honorable Chief Marjesi Zwe Mandela. Hereby swear that I will perform my functions as a member of the Pan African Parliament to the best of my ability and with honor and dignity in the service of the peoples of Africa. I will be faithful and true allegiance to the African Union and will preserve, protect, and defend the of the African Union and the protocol to the treaty establishing the African Economic Community relating to the Pan-African Parliament as by law established. And I will promote adherence to the principles of good governance, democracy, human rights, international humanitarian law, peace, stability, and all objectives of the African Parliament. So help me God. From Sudan, Honorable Dr. Amin Hassan Omar, Honorable Amin Flynn Bashir, Honorable Halima Hasabala, Madam, Honorable Magdi Shams Eldin, Honorable Nazar Khalid Mahjoub. is as members of the Pan-African Parliament to the best of our ability with honor and dignity in the service of the peoples of Africa. Uh, we shall be faithful and bear true allegiance 
to the African Union and will preserve, protect, and defend the Constitutive Act of the African Union and the protocol to the treaty establishing the African Economic Community relating to the Pan-African Parliament as by law established. And we shall promote adherence to the principles of good governance, democracy, human rights, international humanitarian law, peace and stability, and all objectives of the Pan-African Parliament. So help us God, we so affirm. وسأقوم بتعزيز الالتزام بالتقييد لغاية الحكم الرشيد والتنفاقية والإنسان والقانون الإنسان للسلم والسراء جميع أهداف البرلمان الإفريقي والله على ما أقول الشهيد وهذه شهادة مني بذلك والله على ما أقول الشهيد وهذه شهادة مني بذلك شكرا From the Republic of Zambia, uh, Honorable Beupe Maxas Joel Ngonga. I, Maxas Joe Waupengonga, hereby swear that I will perform my functions as a member of the Pan-African Parliament to the best of my ability and with honor and dignity in the service of the people of Africa. I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the African Union and will preserve, protect, and defend the Constitutive Act of the African Union and the protocol to the treaty establishing the African Economic Community relating to the Pan-African Parliament as by law established. And I will promote adherence to the principles of good governance, democracy, human rights, international humanitarian law, peace, stability, and all objectives of the Pan-African Parliament. So help me God. I'll go back to Central African Republic and invite Honorable Bindala Kundro Anselme. Moi, Anselme Bindala Kondrou. I, Anselme Bikulandudu, a member of the Pan African Parliament, hereby swear solemnly declare that I will perform my duties as a member of the Pan African Parliament to the best of my ability, with honor, dignity, in the service of the peoples of Africa. I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the African Union and will preserve, protect, and defend the Constitutive Act of the African Union and the protocol to the treaty establishing the African Economic Community relating to the Pan-African Parliament as by law established. And uh, will promote adherence to the principles of good governance, democracy, human rights, international humanitarian law, peace, stability, and all objectives of the Pan-African Parliament. So help, me, so help me God, I so affirm. Honorable members, allow me to go back to Congo and invite Honorable Pascal Tsate Mabiala.
moi. Aïe. Pascal Sachi Mabiala, member of the Pan-African Parliament, solemnly declare before God and the people of Africa that I shall perform my duties as a member of the Pan-African Parliament to the best of my ability with honor and dignity in the service of the peoples of Africa. I shall be faithful and bear true allegiance to the African Union and will preserve, protect, and defend the constitutive act of the African Union and the protocol to the treaty, establishing the African Economic Community relating to the Pan-African Parliament as by law established. And I shall promote uh, adherence to the principles of good governance, democracy, human rights, international humanitarian law, peace, stability, and all objectives of the Pan-African Parliament. Uh, I so affirm. Honorable members, allow me to go back to Liberia and call again Honorable Madam Julie F. Weir, if she is in the house. Thank you, honorable members. 71 um, new members have been sworn in. Only one has not been able to be sworn in today. We hope that she can be sworn in tomorrow or in the days to come. Thank you, Mr. Thank you Clark. very much. Thank you very much. Honorable member, you are now member of Pan-African Parliament. You are most welcome in your house. You have sworn in with honor and dignity. So we are, wish you all the best. This is our uh, parliament. We need to be together. We need to be united in the interest of the people of Africa. So you are most welcome. Je, cher collègue, la science est momentanément. Honorable colleague, we suspend the meeting for 15 minutes. I invite the guest of honor to go to the presidential suite. 15 minutes, please. Uh, take advantage so that you can take a cup of coffee. We we'll suspend the meeting for 15 minutes. Thank you.
Honourable members, honourable members, please kindly get seated. May everybody kindly get seated, please. Honourable members, the President will lead the guest of honour into a chamber. We we'll kindly request every honourable member and guest to please stand. Honourable members, distinguished guests, your special guest of honour, His Excellency Mr. Musa Faki Mahamat, the chairperson of the African Union Commission.
Excellence. Your Excellency, Dr. Musa Faki, Mohammed Chairperson of the African Union Commission. Your Excellency, Commissioner for Political Affairs of the African Union. Your Excellency, Commissioner for Trade and Industry of the African Union. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, speakers and presidents of the Senate and uh, assemblies of the Pan-African Parliament, Your Excellencies, Heads of Diplomatic Corps, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, ambassadors and representatives of international organizations accredited to South Africa, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, members of Parliament. It is a distinct honor for me to welcome His Excellency Musa Faki Mohammed, Chairperson of the African Union Commission and the delegation accompanying him, most welcome to the Pan-African Parliament. The Pan-African Parliament has for some time felt sidelined by the Commission with which it should collaborate closely to implement the African Union agenda. Dr. Musa Faki Mohammed is a is a very very varied person that I would like which needs no introductions however he has been part of all the struggles of the Pan-African Parliament he was one of the artisans of the adoption of the Malabo protocol when he held the position of Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Chad he did not only do this effort for the uh, protocol of Malab Malabo, but Dr. Faki Mohammed is one of the pioneers who drafted the Constitutive Act uh, relating to the Pan-African Parliament. He is therefore knowledgeable about our institution. Your chairperson of the African Union Commission, as you are visiting your parliament, allow me to say that out of the 55 member states of the African Union, you have in front of you 53 states who are in attendance. This mobilization is indeed due to your efforts, but this mobilization augurs well for a brighter future the members of parliament have a certain number of concerns about their institution, which seems to be stagnating. The member states don't want to ratify the Malabo Protocol, but the very identity of the Pan-African Parliament is also called into question. To this attest the fact that a few years ago, in the beginning of this Pan-African Parliament, the members of Parliament had a diplomatic laissez-passer. And given the efforts we've made, these parliaments later were given diplomatic passports. But a few days before you traveling to Midrand, we had to note that the diplomatic passports have given way to laissez-passer again. So this uh, situation is raising questions. Are we truly the members of Parliament of Africa representing the African people? Your Excellency, Chairperson of the African Union Commission, no matter related to the Parliament will be unknown to you. And we cherish the hope that all the right solutions will be found during your term in office so that the Pan-African Parliament can fully perform its duties. Your Excellency, Mr. Chairperson, I don't want to overshadow you because it is your day today. Just let me say at this juncture that the members of Parliament here and our invited guests are very eager to listen to you because you are bringing a message of hope. This is your day, so I don't want to belabor this, and I want to give you the honor. Long live the African Union. Long live the Pan-African Parliament. Long live Africa. Thank you very much. Lord du jour appel. The 
The order paper now provides for the messages of solidarity. The first message of solidarity will be delivered by Mrs. Anna Batili, Head of Global Parliamentary Engagement from the World Bank. Madam, your commitment in favor of the members of Parliament of the world is well known. I therefore would like to give you the floor that in a few minutes you can give us an overview of your actions that will be beneficial to our Parliament. You have the floor, Madam. Excellence, Monsieur le Président. Your Excellency, Chairperson of the African Union Commission, Mr. Faki Mohamed, Your Excellency, President of the Pan-African Parliament, Honorable Members of Parliament, dear invited guests and friends, it is a great honor for me to address you today. And I would first like to express my appreciation to the President of the Pan-African Parliament, Mr. Roger Nkododang, who through his leadership has continued uh, to improve the influence of the Pan-African Parliament. And I know this has not been easy. Congratulations. Now, as the only continental parliamentary body in the world, you, the parliamentary, the Pan-African Parliament, with 250 members from around 50 nations, stand as a very valued partner for the World Bank Group, both for your number and diversity of your representatives, as well as the, Afri the priorities of the African Union you represent, such as inclusive growth and sustainable development, global good governance, and respect for human rights. As parliamentarians, you are crucial partners for the World Bank Group. You shape development policies. You approve budget and hold your government accountable for World Bank finance programs. For the, the, year, the year 2017 only, the World Bank Group invests in $17 billion in Africa. And this cannot be done without the support of you parliamentarians, because you are in direct contact with those we want to serve, those who are the neediest, which are our populations. Once projects do begin, you help monitor their implementation to ensure local ownership. You make you, this makes you essential at every step of the way. In addition, our engagement with parliamentarians fulfills our commitment to citizen engagement by effectively integrating the citizen's voice into programs for lasting development results and achieving 100% beneficiary feedback on all World Bank finance pro progress. This is why the World Bank has a parliamentary engagement team dedicated to providing you with platform for dialogue and information sharing with development experts and the World Bank senior experts, as well as with your international peers on today's most pressing development issues to encourage multilateral and interparliamentary cooperation, which is at the heart of our engagement today. Interparliamentary cooperation, such that that in our program, as well as right here at the PAP, plays a crucial role in development. Cooperation with parliamentarians allow parliamentarians to stay informed on both African and international issues. You can gain a broader understanding of issues from your peers, including different positions, to better evaluate your national position. Cooperation can also lead to coordination among parliamentarians to harmonize policies and measures among the, your national parliaments and make you complementary, which is a main function of the Pan-African Parliament. Finally, cooperation among parliaments can serve to exchange experience and best practice for impactful policies and effective programs to encourage economic growth and development. We see this time again in our global parliamentary conference, parliamentary workshops, or during field visits 
to which you all members of the Pan-African Parliament have been participating and have been influencing the shape of our policies. I am sure that Sub-Saharan Africa has the youngest population in the world. About 60% of the population is under 25. This surge in working age population represents a great opportunity for economic transformation and growth, but also a potential risk as the workforce is the least trained in the world, which could result in high rates of unemployment leading to conflict and violence. We are hearing similar stories from across the globe. Growing population coupled with the looming threat of digitization and automation are creating a perfect storm on unemployment and risk. Placing governments, international organizations, and companies, but also organizations such as the Pan-African Parliament, in a virtual race against time to create more and better jobs. And you have a crucial role to play in terms of legislation for employment. Because of these, jobs and youth jobs in particular are at the forefront of the development conversation today. To give you some, of, some examples of what we are doing at the World Bank Group, just last one month, our global parliamentary conference included the half-day parliamentary session on policies to create youth jobs, which brought together parliamentarians, some of your members, youth leaders, entrepreneurs, and NGOs to discuss policies and propose legislation to support youth job creation. The upcoming 2019 World Development Report will focus on the, on the changing nature of work. And it will explore how changes such as technological progress, globalization, shifting demographics, urbanization, and climate change are importing work across the globe. And what, what actions that individual companies and governments can take in response to these changes. The evolving landscape of work is creating shifts in the priorities of education, as well as the demand for infrastructure, stretching already spare public funds even thin thinner, which is why, whenever possible, the World Bank partners with multiple stakeholders and looks for private funding to maximize finance for development and save precious financing for where it is needed the most. Uh, one infrastructure program that I feel speaks volume about the power of such multilateral cooperation and is perfectly in line with the Pan-African Parliament's mission is to ensure the full participation of African people in the development and economic integration of the continent. It is the West African Power Pool Program, for instance. The reality is that in Africa, access to oil electricity is only at 52% with up to 80 hours per month of shortage. What more can we do collectively to reverse that situation? The multi multiple benefits of programs such as the PAP demonstrate why populist sentiments are surging in many regions of the world, especially in Europe. Africa is embracing unity and multilateral. Quite a transformative step for Africa and the world. We are really hoping that the Pan-African Parliament, which is the pulse. I will now be speaking in French. There is a saying that say, if you want to go quick, go alone. But if you want to go far, let Zimbabwe. She was here as a member of parliament, and she was the chairperson of the Southern African Caucus. The First Lady, Your Excellency, you have the floor. Honorable Rojan Kododang, President of the Pan-African Parliament, Vice President of the Pan-African Parliament, fellow chairpersons of the Northern, Eastern, Central, and Western Caucasus of the Pan-African Parliament, colleagues in the Permanent Committee on Trade, Customs, and Immigration Matters, honorable members of the Pan-African Parliament, Mr. V. Pierre Arawa, Clerk of the Pan-African Parliament, Officials of the Pan-African Parliament, 
staff from our various parliaments, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Honorable President, I stand before you today with a heavy heart to put in. As a result of this progressive development, I am now laden with additional responsibilities that come with being the First Lady of the Republic. 15 was my time to interface with you when my parliament seconded me to be a member of this august body, the PAP. The close of the sixth ordinary session of the fourth parliament of the PAP marks the end of my pleasant sojourn. Honorable President, I'm leaving the PAP with invaluable knowledge, knowledge and experience, which I'll always treasure. I'm coming out of this work group a better person and am thankful to you individually and severally for the skills you so generously imparted in me. To that end, I'm indebted to Honorable Roger Nko Dodang, the president of the PAP, my colleagues in the Southern Region Caucus, colleagues, both male and female parliamentarians, colleagues in the Permanent Committee on Trade, Customs and Immigration Matters, and colleague chairpersons in the Northern, Eastern, Central, and Western Caucasus, as well as the Clerk of Parliament and his entire staff. I appreciate your priceless support as being with you in this chamber and various forums across the continent helped mold me into the person I am today. I have learned how to take direction and criticism with gratitude and calmness. It is not easy to chair the regional caucuses and my colleagues, chairpersons, will testify to that. But with their support, the task became manageable. I have also learned to be to be minded and to value other people's opinions and contributions. Being a member of such a wonderful family brought together by the motto, One Africa, One Voice, and the values of Ubuntu, inculcated in me vital skills for my new role in Zimbabwe. I've come to realize that being part of a team means a lot more than just sharing credit. But that it, it is about teamwork and calls for a lot of give and take. And in the process, modification of one's original views. When you are in a team, you have to, at times, lead, follow, and more often than not, meet in the middle. Honorable President, if I could stay here forever, I would gladly do so. But my new constituents is now the entire 16 million people of the Republic of Zimbabwe. As mother to, the, to such a vast population, I need to stay closer home and take charge of the various initiatives that I'm spearheading in the interest of turning around the fortunes of the Zimbabwe people and enhancing their livelihoods. Pursuant to this trust, I launched the Angel of Hope Foundation on 17 February 2018. Honorable President, I wish to pledge my utmost support for this parliament and urge you to continue working hard for the realization of Africa's aspirations as contained in Agenda 2063. I have fond memories of the robust and quality debates in this chamber. These and many other exciting moments will forever remain aged in my mind in the same breath. Honorable members in this chamber will remain in the center of my heart. Finally, allow me to round off my farewell speech by quoting from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 11 to 12, where Paul states Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Aim for restoration, comfort one, another, comfort one another, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. I wish you fruitful deliberations during this session and beyond. I thank you. Merci beaucoup. Mutual obrigado. Yabonga. Tatenda. Thank you, Madam First Lady. We wish you all the success in your new duty. And now I want to give the floor to His Eminences, 
Ionis, who is an uh, architect of Zambia and Malawi. Excellency, you have the floor. Your Excellency, Mr. President of the Pan-African Parliament, Mr. Roger Dungundang, His Excellency, Dr. Musa Faki Mohammed, President of African Union, there are beloved brothers and sisters. The, the Parliamentary Assembly on Orthodoxy, IAO, is celebrating its 25 years of activity. It is a great pleasure for us to participate in the sixth ordinary session of the Pan-African Parliament. The IAO cordially wishes you ongoing success and substantial contribution to the political reality of the great continent in Africa. We wish you success in the works of your session, peace throughout the world, and personal happiness to each and everyone personally and to every African citizen. The Interparliamentary Assembly on Orthodoxy had the pleasure conference which took place in the Parliament in Lebanon on the 3rd and 4th of April for the development of parliamentarism, which will be in Moscow between 4th and 5th of June 2018. Your Excellency, Mr. President, Mr. Sergei Popov, the President of the General Assembly on Orthodoxy, and uh, Secretary General Mr. Andreas Mikhailidis have asked me to hand deliver to you the invitation for your participation to the 25 years anniversary General Assembly held in Athens, Greece, between 20th and 30th of June 2018, with subject parliamentary democracy and Christian values. 25 years of the Parliamentary Assembly on Orthodoxy. Thank you very much. God bless you all. God bless Africa. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. The Archbishop is the coordinator of the Interparliamentary Congress on Orthodoxy in the uh, world. And now, I want to invite Dr. Abu Hosseini, the Speaker of the Comorian Parliament. In the name of the Almighty. Excellency, Chairperson of the African Union Commission, Musa Faki Mohammed, uh, President of the Pan African Parliament, Mr. Nduko Ndang, Madam Bete, the uh, Speaker of the South African Parliament, uh, members of the Diplomatic Corps, distinguished representatives of international organizations, the heads and presidents of uh, African institutions, honorable members of Pan-African Parliament, invited guests, uh, all protocols observed. Ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's a great pleasure for me to participate in this uh, opening of the sixth legislature of the Pan-African Parliament marked by others the uh, swearing-in ceremony, formalizing uh, the, so of the first uh, batch of uh, Comorian members of parliament into the Pan-African parliament. It is with a great feeling that I have uh, witnessed this uh, very emotional moment. Uh, but as uh, the saying goes, all's well that ends well. What today appears to be the end, 
but it's rather just a step. It's the prelude uh, for a major parliamentary adventure for the Assembly of the Union of the Comoros, which henceforth should integrate uh, in its agenda the priorities of the parliament. In fi indeed, uh, the Comorian uh, parliamentary institution, by joining uh, this continental parliament, uh, and if need be, confirms uh, that uh, you are translating words into deeds, and therefore the Union of the Comoros and its uh, avowed and as you presumed uh, Pan-Africanism. On this occasion, I have the pleasure to uh, carry out a pleasant duty, that is to convey to uh, the President of the Pan-African Parliament the warm greetings of His Excellency Azali Asumani, President of the Union of the Comoros, and to wish uh, full success to this session of the Parliament. In the same vein, I would like to reiterate uh, my sincere gratitude to all those who directly or indirectly have uh, kindly supported us uh, in uh, our approach, in our action uh, to join the Pan-African Parliament. I think President uh, Dagan, a few of uh, many years, and who, through his personal commitment, uh, and uh, he should be thanked for uh, his action. I want to pay tribute to the ambassador of the Comoros to the African Union for his uh, consistent commitment to this cause, which has become over the years a kind of obsession for him. Mr. President, dear colleagues, members of the parliament, ladies and gentlemen, the challenge uh, that the African Union has to take up uh, justify on a daily basis uh, the urgent need uh, that is to provide the African Union with an organ with a parliamentary action. To this tool, the African Union is taking a further step uh, for Africans. Africans, African citizens who are becoming the real citizens uh, of the continent with rights uh, and also obligations to carry out on uh, regarding an, a common ideal. To honor this commitment, the African Union needs a strong parliament that is ready to give its voice a pluridisciplinary a parliament, uh, and uh, obviously that will obviously reflect uh, the automatic uh, national reflex actions. And this is how the African Union will uh, succeed in attaining the objectives of Agenda 2063, uh, which has been laid down by the African Union. It is at this price. And it is only at this price that important projects like the free movement of persons uh, of goods and services on the continent, uh, like the project like uh, the African and Monetary uh, Union on the continent uh, will be able uh, to emerge from this situation for the well-being of the peoples of Africa. Mr. President, distinguished members of parliament, ladies and gentlemen, as I was saying earlier on, we have to face and take up many challenges with major problems. If there is a commitment that I can make from this spot, uh, where is the Assembly of the Union of the Comoros should work uh, relentlessly to implement the uh, Malabo Protocol to make uh, the Pan-African Parliament a legislative organ that can uh, govern the destiny of the African Union and its organs. The Comorian members of parliament, together with their colleagues from the four corners of the continent, will uh, endeavor relentlessly for the uh, consolidation of democracy, observance of human rights, and also good governance and sustainable development of the continent. 
the Pan-African Parliament will or can always rely on the determination of the members of Parliament of the Comoros in order to relay its message when its recommendations and directives are to be implemented in line with the target that has been laid down by the African Union and the Pan-African Parliament. Mr. President, uh, members of parliament, ladies and gentlemen, our August institution has chosen uh, uh, a theme for this ordinary session, the fight against corruption. It is a relevant theme which uh, will mobilize and galvanize uh, all the countries and will leave no one behind. The corruption which is uh, ravaging the African economies continue to undermine the efforts that have been made in order to improve administrative and financial administration and the governance of our continent and its institutions. Today, the studies and other reports uh, that have been prepared by specialized organs uh, like Transparency International converge uh, to say that Africa is, uh, in fact, uh, is uh, lagging behind in the fight against this scourge. It is high time, therefore, that the pan uh, parliamentary institu institutions uh, should uh, prevail and uh, also to take position to be in the forefront of this struggle. We, therefore, need to provide our countries with the legislative uh, organs and instruments uh, that can be a deterrent and also repress uh, this uh, scourge and also encourage transparency as uh, the absolute uh, standards for the management of public affairs. And this uh, should be strengthened, uh, that is, upstream with education, sensitization, mobilization uh, of the public uh, affairs and public life. Indeed, uh, the fight against corruption is, uh, of course, uh, not uh, very attractive, but Nevertheless, countries have made, some countries have made the significant progress and are doing well. And out of this experience, uh, we can uh, obviously draw inspiration. I am convinced that the fight against corruption, just like the fight against uh, terrorism, uh, will be, in fact, take uh, the step uh, that is to shed light what we call the issue of economic citizenship, uh, what we call in our country, the naturalization of uh, resident uh, stateless uh, people who are in the, in the Gulf and other places. The report that have been submitted to the national authorities have uh, also, uh, over the past nine years, uh, has uh, pointed out uh, the financial scandals with uh, international ramifications. The Assembly of the Union of the Comoros is uh, happy with uh, that is happy with the action, but is uh, to give it a judicial nature so that this problem can be dealt with South African soil. It is also an opportunity for me and my delegation uh, to welcome uh, the valiant people of South Africa, known uh, for its hospital legendary hospitality and its sense of brotherhood. Uh, long live the Pan-African Parliament. Long live the African Union in peace and harmony. And I thank you. Merci beaucoup, uh, Excellence, Monsieur le Président. De I thank the uh, Speaker of the Assembly of the Union of the Comoros. Now, now I would like to uh, call on the last speaker in this series, that is uh, Senator uh, Ngo Wadundo, who is also the acting speaker of the Parliament of the DRC. You have the floor, Mr. Speaker. You have the floor. Huh? Where is the president? Uh, the President of the Senate of Swaziland, 
You have the floor. Well, Swaziland has changed, uh, and I am talking of Swashi. Chairman of the African Unity, Your Excellency, the President of the Pan-African Parliament, Honorable Members of the Pan-African Parliament, and all protocol observed. Honorable members, I bring the greetings from the kingdom of Eswatini. I understand you know Swaziland, we're no longer Swaziland, the colonial name is Eswatini. <laughs> and I bring the greetings from uh, the Queen Mother and the entire Swazi nation, Sanbona Aninonga. My duty and my task is simple, uh, Your Excellency is to congratulate the newly members that has been sworn in today, and it marks the growth and the, uh, the growth of the Pan-African Parliament family. Your Excellency, I have also witnessed the history being made today, whereby you, you rightly said that we have the family from the Morocco. They have now been newly sewn in, so congratulations, Morocco, to be part of the Pan-African family. We believe, Your Excellency, that they will advance the interest of Africa and diligently serve the continent. Our task is to take this continent to another level. Africa has always been looked down, and we have no, uh, so it, all the task and the duties, it is incumbent upon you members of the Pan-African Parliament to raise the flag. Let us take our position now in this world. We have been a continent that has been undermined. And by your presence here and by the growth of this family, it may, we, we believe that Africa will soon take its rightful position and become one of the respected uh, continent in this world. May the good Lord bless you all as uh, you take your task that has been given unto you at this, from this day on. We look forward that the uh, Pan-Africa will take its strides. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Merci beaucoup. I thank the President of the Senate of Swatini, Mohammed, uh, Professor Mohamed Hassanou, a member of the delegation, and also a member of the delegation of the chairperson of the commission. I would like to request uh, the chairperson of the Commission of African Union to tell us a bit of his vision of the union that is leading the uh, Commission, so uh, it is now time to listen uh, very carefully to the statement uh, of uh, Mr. Musa Faki Mahamat, who has graced us, and I would like you to acclaim his presence. Honorable President of the Pan-African Parliament, Honorable Members of the Pan-African Parliament, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen of the Diplomatic Corps, Ladies and Gentlemen. 18 March 2004 to 7 May 2018, these are 14 years that the Pan-African Parliament, which through its existence and its dynamism, has been contributing to uh, reconfigure the institutional landscape of our continent uh, with the inception of the African Union. Time has flown by, and uh, this honorable institution continues uh, to include uh, in uh, its uh, track record uh, marks of success. I'm happy to be here to meet with you in South Africa. 
this country whose history has been written with tears, blood, selflessness, courage, but also an extraordinary capacity of uh, transcending and also to forgive in order to make it possible what is what was the spirit of the struggle of Nelson Mandela. The rebirth uh, of the uh, nation, uh, what is, which is uh, nourished by values of humanism and tolerance, uh, this rainbow nation. May I present uh, my uh, tribute and, uh, to President Cyril Ramaphosa and to his government and the South African people for the generous hospitality accorded to the Pan-African Parliament. I'm grateful to you for affording me this opportunity through this uh, solemn ceremony to address uh, the Pan-African Parliament. My presence here the first uh, since uh, I took up office as the chairperson of the Commission of African Union in March 2017 contributes to the approach that I want to adopt uh, in uh, the conduct of our heavy and exalting responsibilities that our leaders have entrusted to me. I intend to interact with all in the African Union. The synergy of action between the different organs and structures of organization is the only guarantee uh, to attain the objectives that we have laid down in Agenda 2063, that is uh, to give back uh, the golden letters uh, of Pan-Africanism to Pan-Africanism and also fully harness uh, the intelligence of our continent and also develop the potentialities. It is also an opportunity for me to benefit uh, from your wisdom and your experience, to draw inspiration from your faith uh, and your Pan-Africanist commitment. Uh, I wait uh, for your words and statements, as it should be done by any parliamentary institution uh, that uh, respects itself, that these uh, be looked at in a very critical manner in order to identify the imperfection, the dysfunctioning, and other drawbacks uh, that exist uh, in uh, our organization in order to give it a new impetus. Honorable President, ladies and gentlemen, the launching and the inception of the African Union in 2002 marked a major step in the march of our continent towards greater integration and unity. This action testifies to the commitment of our leaders of the continent to take into their hands the destiny of our continent by finding the adapted uh, responses to the challenges that we have to take up. Uh, nothing shows that this determination to promote African solution to African problems uh, and is not better shown uh, by uh, the establishment of such organizations as the Peace and Security Council, NEPAD, uh, the peer review mechanism, the Human Rights Commission, only to mention these. The advent of the African Union has also marked a greater awareness of the need to involve more effectively the African peoples in the management of the affairs of the continent. The ambition of the Union is a collective ambition, and its fulfillment demands the involvement of everyone. From this viewpoint, the Pan-African Parliament uh, occupies a very special place in the institutional architecture of a union. It is by excellence uh, the organ uh, that is uh, to convey and voice out uh, the feelings of the African peoples and ensure the concerns of these are adequately taken into account. I would like to point out here the remarkable action led by the uh, Pan-African Parliament in different areas, despite uh, the multiple constraints faced by the Parliament. I am aware, distinguished members of Parliament. Uh, I welcome the decision of the, pa of the Parliament to organize annually a debate on the theme that has been adopted by the heads of state and government, that is to orient the priorities of a union. In so doing, your institution is given a greater voice to the concerns that have been expressed. 
The debate that has been organized by the parliament on the report of the high-level panel led by former President Thabo Mbeki on the illicit financial flows is an invaluable contribution to the theme that has been adopted for 2018, that is the fight against corruption. I encourage all the members of the parliament to discuss uh, this issue and the theme in uh, their respective assemblies and parliament. Uh, the organization by the Pan-African Parliament of a meeting on youth in Khartoum in the Sudan in November 2017 has been another example of the synergy that exists between uh, your institution and the organs of the Union. 2017 was, as you are aware, the, U, the, uh, uh, the year of African youth with a theme that is to harness uh, the demographic dividend by investing in youth. I am pleased to contribute uh, to and stress the contribution of the Pan-African Parliament to other causes of the continent, particularly the advocacy to uh, lift the sanctions uh, and other measures taken against some of our member states. These actions of parliamentary diplomacy are the natural supplement to the efforts carried out by the Commission and other organs of our Union. Honorable President, ladies and gentlemen, when the Pan-African Parliament was established, the objective was to provide it uh, with and give it uh, full legislative powers after 10 years. The adoption of the new protocol in June 2014 uh, specifically open uh, the, uh, the way to this development. But four years after, this instrument is still, has not, is still come into force. This situation reflects a, gen a more general problem that is not to make our decisions effective, which uh, impacts on the credibility of our commitments and undermines our efforts. Since the inception of the Organization of African Unity, some 60 instrument, legal instruments have been adopted, focusing on var various areas, going from peace and security to development and economic integration, through human rights, good governance, uh, gender, environment, uh, youth, culture, institutional development of a union, transport, uh, cross-border cooperation, and others. If the adoption of these instruments uh, bears witness to the political will that is to give greater impetus uh, to inter-African cooperation, we have also to recognize and accept that uh, the considerable delay in uh, having these instruments uh, into force, in fact, creates legitimate doubts. Out of the 50 instruments, uh, more than 20 have not yet entered into force because it did not obtain the necessary required number of ratifications. The most emblematic case uh, in this, uh, it is the Inter-African uh, Convention on, uh, on Justice and Human Rights, uh, which is called the Malabo Protocol, has not been ratified by any member state for four years after its adoption. That is, we really cannot understand because uh, our Constitutive Act uh, is very clear on the issue of impunity, and we obviously have uh, shown our determination to take into account uh, this exigency and our refusal of an international justice with, for political reasons and uh, because of uh, the uh, various uh, forces uh, have made Africa the ground of uh, that is for a, 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 an attempt uh, to have these problems uh, hidden. Indeed, uh, as some uh, have entered into force, uh, in fact, they have become universal on the continent. Uh, and yet, the uh, overall uh, situation remains alarming, and it cannot go on lasting for long, unless you want to run the risk uh, of uh, weakening uh, uh, irremediably, the architecture that we have uh, built and uh, laid down and lose the credibility and legitimacy even in the eyes of our peoples. We should do everything and do more in order to translate into deeds our words. Uh, the Commission will, uh, in fact, uh, strengthen its efforts uh, in uh, terms of advocacy. And 
I never miss any opportunity when I meet the leaders of our member states to echo this concern. From this viewpoint, uh, nothing is more urgent than the entry into force uh, of the legal instruments relating to continental integration, particularly the uh, continental, the African continental free uh, trade uh, area, the free movement of persons, and the African passport. Mr. President, uh, members of Parliament, we are working on the Pan African on the African passport and. Uh, who deserves this more than you? And uh, obviously, this uh, will be done. We have all been happy with the impetus given uh, by uh, the extraordinary session of the summit. In fact, uh, the Pan African Parliament has an essential role uh, to play in this regard in conformity with its constituent protocol, but commits uh, to encourage the national and regional parliaments to ratify the treaties and uh, the other instruments of the African Union and to integrate them into their legal systems. Honorable President, ladies and gentlemen, I'm addressing myself uh, to you at a moment of more concrete uh, form to our aspirations through the implementation of Agenda 2063. Since my uh, taking up office, uh, I have endeavored uh, to move forward these areas and uh, to make our member states aware of these ambitions. With regard particularly with the financing of our union, you know better than anyone else uh, that the situation of excessive dependency on our international partners, we appreciate uh, the, their generosity uh, of the partners, but this situation cannot continue forever. It undermines our capacity to take decision and to take action and uh, will uh, deny our African uh, leadership, the continental leadership, and the African ownership of everything that we want to do. I will be to state that the heads of state and government have given strong attention to this matter by imploring all the member states uh, to impose a levy of 0.2 percent on eligible imports uh, in order to come up with the financial autonomy which is indispensable. I would like uh, to point out that to date, uh, 22 member states are in an advanced state of implementing this levy. As regards the peace fund, more than $40 million have been mobilized, which is the highest amount uh, that has been mobilized since uh, the establishment uh, of this fund in 1993. There is no need to overemphasize the importance of the role of the Pan-African Parliament so that the financial autonomy of our union can become a reality. It behoves you, as members of this organ, uh, to exercise in your respective countries and carry out the necessary advocacy with your governments and to remind them relentlessly their obligations. At your request, uh, tomorrow here itself, uh, the head of the reform unit uh, will be giving you more detailed information on the contents of the ongoing process of reforms. Honorable President, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the state uh, structures have collapsed completely uh, because of an, a badly thought out international intervention and uh, doubtful legality. In fact, are so many examples uh, that remind us of the immense challenges that we need. The Lake Chad Basin in the Sahel are uh, really experiencing this scourge on a daily basis. The African Union has set the objective, that is to silence the guns by 2020. It is almost tomorrow. This endeavor can only succeed with the contribution of each and everyone, and you, members of parliament, uh, let us uh, be determined and readable efforts in order to prove the skeptics uh, what is wrong on the African continent. In order to succeed, we need to fully take ownership of our peace efforts. This means, first of all, that is to win the intellectual struggle, that is to analyze rigorously our problems in order to identify the most appropriate solution that is far from uh, uh, the inter foreign interference and ready-made solutions. This means uh, that by drawing uh, from our own resources uh, 
and in a substantive manner the activities that are linked in our quest for peace, security, stability of the continent. This means, finally, that our partners, international partners, should be in the service of our objectives. That is, the role of the international community should be clearly circumscribed, that is, to support our efforts through a, an advantageous uh, and respectful uh, partnership instead of replacing Africa and to be a substitute uh, and uh, to dominate the continent. Honorable President, ladies and gentlemen, apart from this daily action which have been carried out in order to solve uh, on a daily basis the conflict situations, our efforts should be also on uh, the establishment of uh, peace and stability on the continent. Uh, in this regard, uh, I will never get tired of underscoring the importance uh, of the values of good governance, democracy, and uh, observance of human rights, as well as gender equality, the emancipation of women, and also the youth associations and uh, in the service of their government. Our union uh, has all the necessary legal instruments, uh, and uh, obviously the priority is not to legislate, but rather to mobilize stronger political will so that these can be implemented uh, in this area as well as others. Uh, that is the sensitization of the pan African Parliament. Uh, we don't have to make any comment on it. Uh, Members of Parliament, you are the representatives of your national voters and uh, wards. Therefore, I would like uh, to request you to join our efforts in order to give a new impetus of integration in Africa. Uh, being elected at the uh, by all sorts of trafficking and also the illegal migration. And you have seen the fate of our migrants in Libya and elsewhere, which has revealed all the tragedy. The acceleration of uh, continental integration is, in fact, helping the attainment of this objective through improvement of economic and financial governance in our member state. The Commission, beyond these stereotype uh, statements in favor, that is, uh, wants uh, to concretely carry out actions that will have a positive impact in the life of our peoples and uh, also the development prospects of our countries. It is obvious that these efforts uh, will be, of course, better known if uh, the legitimacy of our union, and that is if they are entrenched in the legitimacy of our union and in the conscience of our peoples uh, and in the thoughts of our people. As you can see, the task is very huge, and uh, obviously it is excruciating. No, we have no other choice but to uh, succeed. And uh, within uh, an international market by serious uh, regression of multilateralism, a rise in national egoism, and a weakening of international solidarity. Therefore, the continent has to close its ranks and speak with one voice. The negotiations of post Cotonou arrangements, uh, which will soon uh, be initiated, affords us the opportunity to highlight uh, our unity and our cohesion. Uh, since uh, we henceforth have the African Common Position adopted by the Executive Council adopted in Kigali in March, and all the member states have the duty and obligation to defend. Honorable President, ladies and gentlemen, one of the ten uh, trends uh, over the past decades uh, is uh, the decline in parliamentarism and the rise uh, of executive power over the legislative power. In fact, uh, within uh, the uh, Continental U Union uh, project, uh, the role of the Pan-African Parliament is clear and essential as uh, long as uh, the legal provisions of the Union and instruments in this task uh, will obviously sensitize our people and about the major problems that are at stake. Obviously, the maintenance of the Pan-African Parliament to be just a consultative organ 
in fact, will only limit uh, the powers of this parliament. Hence, uh, the need uh, to bring about the uh, transformation that is so wished in order to system which I know is positive. Honorable President, ladies and gentlemen, considering the commitment with which you are imbued, it is high time uh, uh, to ask the question, which is that spirit uh, that is imbuing you with this force and uh, that makes you transcend uh, uh, this situation. If the reply is pan-Africanism, therefore, therefore we have different situations where we have uh, abandonment, uh, renunciation, and also to giving up uh, on uh, the mo uh, deep motivation of Afghan people. There is no shame in rethinking our approach to look at uh, the, and adapt uh, to the new exigencies of uh, the requirements of Africa, our Africa. In fact, Pan-Africanism appears to be the other side of multilateralism to which we adhere and for which we militate on all these uh, fronts and in all these struggles. In the face of all these uh, challenges, our only weapon, our invincible uh, power is the same, that is our unity. I want to repeat, and what I've been saying elsewhere, uh, with it uh, we are everything, and without it we are nothing. My intimate hope is that uh, to, with you, this will be a great day of uh, African Union, and I thank you for your kind attention. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, Your Excellency uh, Dr. Mustafa Kimama, for your message. Extremely rich uh, in terms of uh, learning experiences for all of us. And we wish to reiterate that it is important that we work in synergy uh, to try and come up with uh, the United States of Africa thus desired by our founding fathers. And uh, I think your commitment does uh, give us hope that uh, tomorrow will be better for this parliament, as you so rightly indicated, has been working tirelessly for 14 years. And despite our efforts, and these efforts I'm sure you're no doubt aware, and I reminded the meeting of them, we have never ceased uh, to uh, uh, ask our governments uh, to uh, continue uh, to fund our missions and that, of course, is, is in our quest and their quest to make sure that we continue to work for the peoples that we represent. And um, this money could have been used to uh, uh, treat malaria in various uh, parts of uh, the continent. I know that there is a human capital that is uh, absolutely immense in this uh, parliament. So why don't you give us then the opportunity to express our intelligence. Mr. President, I think uh, that your conclusions are full of hope for us, and we shall meet again to continue to discuss all these issues. Hopefully, time will come when solutions are going to be proposed. On behalf of the Pan-African Parliament, on behalf of uh, the clerk and uh, my management team, we would like to say thank you very much for taking time to come and uh, meet us here and represent uh, our continental organization and to tell us uh, what your uh, objectives uh, for the coming month are. Thank you very much again for making time to come over. Sir. Honorable colleagues, let me invite uh, the clerk to make announcements. Thank you, Your Excellency, President of the Pan-African Parliament. Thank you. Your Excellency, the Chairperson of the African Union Commission, our guest of honor. Honorable members, I have four announcements. The first one is that applications are being received now for new and for renewal of AU passports for honorable members. So the applications should be submitted in the parliamentary lounge starting today. And uh, you have one week 
in which to submit the applications. We start today and we'll close on Monday, the 14th of May. For new applications, uh, please uh, be prepared to submit two passport photographs and your national passport. For renewals, please be uh, ready to submit two passport photographs and the old, the expiring African Union passport. My second announcement is that uh, following the expiry of the term of the current Bureau of the Pan-African Parliament, I would like to announce to this August House vacancies in the Bureau of the Pan-African Parliament for the following positions. President of the Pan-African Parliament, First Vice President of the Pan-African Parliament, Second Vice President of the Pan-African Parliament, Third Vice President of the Pan-African Parliament, and Fourth Vice President of the Pan-African Parliament. Elections for these positions are scheduled for Thursday, 10th of May, 2018, which is this week, this coming Thursday, from half past two in the afternoon to six o'clock in the evening. Submissions were called for nominations of candidates from the regional caucuses for both the position of president and the positions of vice president on March 8, 2018. The closing date for receiving submissions of candidatures for all these five positions is Thursday, 10th of May at half past eight to the office of the clerk of the Pan-African Parliament. Following Following the elections, uh, following the vacancies that uh, we've just announced, we expect that the regional caucuses will submit nominations as they wish, and the closing date is 10th of May at half past eight. The submissions should be made to the office of the clerk. Similarly, there will be vacancies for the leaderships of the other organs of the parliament. So leadership of the caucuses, leadership of the permanent committees. And these are also scheduled for elections within the various caucuses and committees as indicated in the program. Let me consult my colleagues. My, my third announcement is um, to let you know the allocations of venues for the meetings scheduled for this afternoon. The West African Caucus is expected to meet from half past two this afternoon to six o'clock. And the West African Caucus has been allocated this chamber as the venue of their meeting. The Central African Region Caucus is expected to meet from half past two to six o'clock in committee room number one. The East African Region Caucus is expected to meet from half past two to six o'clock in committee room number two. The Southern Region, Southern African Region Caucus 
is expected to meet from half past two to six o'clock in committee room number three. The North African Region Caucus is expected to meet from half past two to six o'clock in committee room number four. These are the allocations that we have made for you. My third announcement is that when we leave this um, chamber, kindly go to the right. When you exit, go to the right for a photo session with our honorable guest, uh, His Excellency, the chairperson of the African Union Commission, His Excellency Musafaki Mahamat. My last announcement is that it has pleased the Honorable President of the Pan-African Parliament, His Excellency Rojan Kododang, to host a lunch. And you are all invited to that lunch. It will be at Galaga. The lunch is in honor of our guest of honor, His Excellency Musafaki Mahamat, the chairperson of the African Union Commission. Thank you, Your Excellency. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Thank you uh, very much, uh, Mr. Clark. Thank you. Thank you, Clark. I would like uh, to uh, repeat uh, the invitation for lunch, which the Pan African Parliament is offering in the honor of uh, His Excellency, the Chairperson of the AU Commission. We'll start with the parliamentarians. We can go on discussing with the commissioners over lunch. I reiterate our invitation. Ambassadors, all our guests, the new members, everybody will have lunch at the Gallagher Center following the photo session. We have come now to the end of our proceedings. The session stands adjourned up to tomorrow, uh, tomorrow the 8th of May at 9. Thank you. Honorable members, uh, the delegation from uh, the Comoros will join the Eastern Region Caucus. The delegation from Sao Tome and Principe will join the Central Africa Region Caucus. Thank you.